mention nothing. I have someone here that has been on CNN because I love CNN. I was telling them earlier. You know, in essence, that's the avenue. Those are magazines I read. You know, and here's someone sitting in Philly. It's just like, okay, I can go brag about this. But as you can see, he has so many corporations he has worked for. And so without further ado, I like that phrase, um, I want Mr. Robinson to stand and greet you and give, give you some information and that he will feel that will help you successfully. Thank you. About 16 to 20 years ago, I was living here in Austin, and I was just like you. Um, I had some skills, but I knew if I wanted to move forward, I had to learn something else, and I had to learn how to type. I don't think they have typewriters anymore. This is an IBM selected typewriter and you learn how to type. And when you make a mistake, guess what you did? Backspace. <laughs> <laughs> Either backspace and art. Well, first you had this little strip and you touch that. And then after a while it was automatic. And then all of a sudden the computers came. Okay? But I was there exactly where you were. And I said I had to learn the skills. So I went to a temp agency and they taught you because I knew how to type word processing, the same programs that you're learning right now. Microsoft Office, um, you're learning Excel, Word, PowerPoint? PowerPoint. Okay, so you're learning those. So they were new back then, except it was on a different type of program. They didn't have Windows. It was different. Okay? So I knew that once I did that, then I can make more money. This is why you're here. You want to make more money, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I knew I could make more money. So what I did is I found out what the people who are making the most money, how fast they were typing. And that was my goal. The faster I typed and the less errors, the more money I made. And I got to a point where I made up to $14 an hour as a word processor back in 1994. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you something that they probably didn't tell you. I went to North Texas State. Academically, I didn't do very well. I think my grade point average was about Two. It should be about three or four. It's about two. I studied hard and studied hard and studied hard. And English was my worst subject. They said, Jesus, don't go, you don't do well in English. So what I thought was, wow, I think I'll write a book. This came on years later. And I'm going to introduce that book in about two seconds. And if somebody tells you you can't do something, don't listen to them. I'm telling you. The skills that you have are going to prepare you for this journey that you're on, for something in the future. This is just the beginning. This is the book that I wrote. It's called The African American Travel Guide. This has been on CNN. I've been on CNN with the book, but it's been on CNN. It sells in major bookstores around the world. And I wrote it because people can learn about African American history as they travel. All this stuff you see here, historic sites, people, things like that, as they travel, because I like to travel. I'm going to read something to you. This was written by a, a yoga back in thousands of years ago. And this is a true statement. His name is Patanjali. And he said, when you're inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations. There's no limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great, wonderful world. Dominant forces, faculties, and talents become alive. And you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. When you've got something in your mind, something great purpose that all of you have, as long as you keep that in mind, and try not to get sidetracked. Can I use the word God in here? Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Amen. The universe of God will come in and he'll be right there with you the whole time. The whole time. My grandmother, who died about 20 years ago, left me with this passage. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll do it. 50 years old. In 1994, I was to a point where, Wayne, what is it that I want to do? I had no idea. I was like, trying jobs from here, trying this. 
whatever skills I had, that's the kind of job I got. Because that's the skills I have. That's all I thought I could do. So in 1994, I asked myself, and that's why I asked you this question, Wayne, what is it that you want to do with your life? What do you really, 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 in your heart of hearts, want to do with your life? And it took me a couple of weeks to ask, actually answer myself. And I had two things. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew what I liked. Number one, I love people. That's probably the Jesus in me. I just love being around people. I like making people laugh. I like listening to them, learning from them. I love people. So if I had something that involved interacting with people on a regular basis, I'm there. Number two, I love to travel. Give me a ticket, I'll go anywhere. I'm serious. I'm a military brat, so I'm used to traveling <clears throat> every nine months to two years. I love to travel. I like seeing oceans. I like seeing mountains and the desert. If I can get a job where I get to travel and with people, I'm happy. So a couple of weeks went by, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? What is it that I could do? So I went to the yellow page to look at the word travel. And there was travel agent. I said, no, I can't be a travel agent. I don't smoke. No. <laughs> and I saw a tour guide. I said, no, I don't want to be a tour guide. Jump on a bus. And, go. and then I saw a tour director. Does anybody know what a tour director is? Organized trips. Exactly that. An organized trip. In other words, I'm the guy who takes people around the world. That's my job. That's what I would do. I thought, that's a nice career. I could do that. So I would meet people at the airport and get them on, get them on a plane, greet them, we get off the plane, there's a bus waiting for us. Actually, it's a coach, not a bus. I was corrected many times. And um, I take them different parts of the world. And we're traveling. I thought, this is perfect. I get paid, and I get a per diem, and the food is free.